is also, of course, about all these other things, about biology. It's about body parts. When we say, is it a boy or a girl, how do we determine that? We have a quick look. Has it got a penis? If it is, it's a boy. If it's not, it's a girl. Back before 1992, all women were sex tested if they competed in athletic um, game, in the Olympic Games. We looked at their body, we looked at their chromosomes, we looked at their hormones to determine, are they really female? And if you were performing very well, but there was XY chromosomes, that was it. You'd be disqualified. We've got past that now. We begin to look now a bit more effectively. But what happens when a child is born? You look and you can't quite decide, is it a boy or is it a girl? Well, they do all the sex testing to try and figure it out. And then somebody makes a judgment because somewhere around, we've got to write on a form, it's male or it's female. Why can't we just let the child grow up and help it figure out the answer to that question? We can't. We have to fix it. And sometimes we get that wrong. So when we finally get to boy or girl, I'm going to wrap the baby in pink or blue, depending upon that identification. And now sex is over, because what we've now moved to is gender. And gender is a social construction. The term gender was defined largely by the feminists in the 1970s to describe those aspects of our sexual identity that are socially constructed. Now, that affects everything. It's about our language, it's about our culture, jobs, education, all sorts of things. Now, these are all man-made rules about how we should perform on the basis of a quick inspection of which genitalia you've got. And that sets things up for the rest of your life. <clears throat> when we put the pink blanket or the blue blanket on, it's actually a message to everybody else saying, look, here, these are the rules about how you now engage with this child. This is what you do. And it's coming from every direction. I want to look at this. Women's bodies are dismembered in ads and ad after ad for all kinds of products. And sometimes the body is not only dismembered, it's insulted, as in this amazing ad that ran quite a few years ago in a lot of women and teen magazines. This is the whole ad, and I'll read you the copy. Your breasts may be too big, too saggy, too pert, too flat, too full, too far apart, too close together, too A cup, too lopsided, too jiggly, too pale, too padded, too pointy, too pendulous, or just too mosquito bites. But with depth styling products, at least you can have your hair the way you want it. <laughs> it is ludicrous, but this ran in teen magazines. Teen magazines target 12-year-old girls. Here they're saying to 12-year-olds, your breasts will never be okay. So our girls are getting the message today so young that they have to be incredibly thin and beautiful and hot and sexy and that they're going to fail because there's no way to measure up to this impossible ideal. The self-esteem of girls in America often plummets when they reach adolescence. Girls tend to feel fine about themselves when they're eight, nine, 10 years old, but they hit adolescence and they often hit a wall. And certainly part of this wall is this terrible emphasis on physical perfection. Men's bodies are very rarely dismembered in ads, more than they used to be, but still it tends to come as a shock. This ad ran about 20 years ago in Vanity Fair. These are all from the national mainstream media. And it was one of the first examples of turning men into sex objects. But when this ad ran about 20 years ago, the ad was so shocking that the ad itself got national media coverage. It's a good thing it got some coverage, I suppose. <laughs> Reporters called me up from all around the country and said, look, they're doing the same thing to men they've always done to women. Well, not quite. They'd be doing the same thing to men they've always done to women if there were copy with this ad that went like this. Your penis may be too small, too limp, too limp, too droopy, too lopsided, too narrow, too fat, too pale, too pointy, too blunt, or just two inches. I'll start with perfect. Perfection masquerades as a compliment. It poses as an achievable idea, but it is a lie to aspire to. So much of both the historical and contemporary economy has relied upon the ideal. The fashion and beauty industries flaunt falsified examples of the perfect skin, eyes, lips, hair, bum, nails, tan, none of which any woman has. 
but all of which apparently we need. <laughs> the health and fitness industry relies upon women and men being dissatisfied with how they look. So they develop workouts that claim to get you the perfect body. But what is the perfect body? I contend that perfection is subjective. It's different for everybody. So how can total physical perfection be possible? Can't be, right? The danger with advertising an impossible ideal as achievable is that it only ever encourages and makes women and men feel like failures. Act feminine. And how do you act feminine? Um, by putting on makeup, dressing feminine, carrying my way, carrying myself in a feminine manner. And how do you carry yourself in a feminine manner? With feminine clothes. Well, I do my makeup and hair. Um, I like to wear um women's clothes. <laughs> As someone from the opposite gender uh, is the length of their hair, so usually longer if it's a girl, and their clothes, so if it's a girl, probably like a skirt, shorter shorts, um, and makeup. They introduce themselves or how they come out as to be, because usually not a lot of things depict what your gender is. There's a, a lot of people think there's a lot of things, but actually you could represent yourself as something different than what you think, or what you originally think they are. Um, I feel like personally society has progressed to the point where it's not as normal to have, like, for example, a girl would have long hair usually, but now a lot of girls are like, you know, doing the, shorter hair and all that kind of stuff. So it's a little like on the line at times. And then guys doing long hair. Yeah, but mostly, you know, you'd notice like girls usually wear like makeup once then and like they have longer hair, mm -hmm. I would say. Styling of the clothing, like girls don't wear the same jeans as guys do. Girls usually wear like skinny jeans. Or... Like ribs. Yeah. yeah, and guys wear like straight jeans. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think of clothing a lot because I think a lot of ways to like express yourself and show your gender is through your clothing. So I think it differs a lot. Gender? By their masculinity and the way they're dressed and if they appear to look like a man. Okay. Um, because now the people, the lesbians and gays are more out with it as in the past they were hiding in behind a closet and now they're more flamboyant so that's how i think it's changed over the past um i feel like we're still equally judged as we were in the past it's just a lot of ideas have changed um i would say it is more acceptable to do like different kinds of things um i mean men don't necessarily have to be as masculine and girls don't have to be as feminine as before and it's still accepted by you know, this generation. Yeah, I feel the overall thing is that there's a core to this uh, for people to be more masculine or, or more feminine. And the thing, the core of this is like how I answered the question before, men tending to be, show more prominent men features and then women as well but within that core you have your trends on top like you have your 80s trends your 90s trends your 2010 trend and right now we're the current uh, the hipsters current trend and you could compare within the trends of how back in the day it was like that rockish punk look then overall but i think this still has that basic core of people just looking more like your gender.
the like cat call and things like that. And I personally was a victim of that, which wasn't fun. Um, uh, well, from my side, being objectified, uh, I'll say, well, as you can see, I kind of don't dress or well, kind of don't look as masculine as what people think I should be. I've been called gay multiple times. I've been bullied because of that. And just because when people try to get a fight with me, I decide to say no. Or when people try to convince me to do substances, I say no as well. It's just not my lifestyle. But then they say that all guys do this. All guys are tough. All guys sleep with a lot of people. All guys do this. But no, I'm just an introvert. I just stay in my, in my room, do my music, and just like enjoy talking to women at a rightful manner instead of in that bad way. But. So then what double standards? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say catcalling is a big thing. <laughs> Not for me necessarily, but I, like I see it happen a lot. And it really bothers me. I think it's really rude. Why do you think guys do that? I think for like the most part, they're just trying to be funny, and they're Impress trying. One another. Yeah, and if they're with their friends and they're like, "Hoo hoo," if they think it's funny, and it's really not. It's like really annoying, actually. So I don't think they notice that, but I think it happens often sometimes, and it kind of gets blown off. Girls definitely get objectified a lot more than men. Oh, uh, well, like how you said it right now, pretty hipster. The, the button, the knot thing, or the way. Or the thing <laughs> people are, the way people dress, kind of like that rockish modern look kind joggers. of. Joggers. Lots of joggers. Um, also, like I said, it also. It's hips, hipster's the trend, but then you also have like the. Like the casual, like the cliche guy where the guy's usually muscular. I don't know about facial hair, probably short hair. Somebody that looks very masculine. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and for girls, that would just be. Beanies, joggers. Well, in the hipster. More athletic, I would say. In, in the hipster world, it's just. I, well, in the hipster world, it's kind of vice versa. They could, they kind of share the same clothing, kind of. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, but in society, it usually could be somebody ha that has bigger breasts, bigger ass, slim body, hips. Curves, skinny, white, long hair, pretty face. And the ideal man would probably be six packs. Skinny again. Skinny, yeah. <laughs> Tall, skinny, flawless, perfect cheekbones, flawless. perfect makeup, like long, flowy hair, perfect personality. Yeah. What's the perfect personality? Someone who's like funny, who can get along with people, who's like caring and nice, and who can attend to her man.